Hello, I have a few slides on a new product that we have developed for HRC data from multi orbits. We are um, compiling um, image mosaics and DTMs that derive from 3D analysis of many orbits. So, this is a project uh, that's carried out by a task group formed within the HRC science team. That's how the first uh, quadrangle or half quadrangle. Uh, looks like that we presented at EGU this year. Um, we adopted the, the MC30 uh, map scheme of USGS uh, and we are always producing half tiles and actually this is a, a whole mapping program or at least a concept for it. <laughs> um, what do we need for it? HRC data of course. Uh, coverage which we are just now in the position only to get in the way we need it. This means complete coverage by adjacent stereo strips. Uh, I will show later why. We are using MOLA to co-register HRC as we did also already for the single strip DTMs we have. We are using block adjustment and that's why you need the adjacent uh, coverage. Um, to refine the absolute accuracy of position of uh, the images because with single strips uh, this is only possible uh, at, the, at the resolution of MOLA but here using um, the stereo images themselves we can refine this to form a, a block of images with very consistent uh, interior geometry. And we also did something on the interpolation uh, of 3D points because HRC images are quite variable in terms of resolution and, and accuracy. This just shows you an example of how um, the multi-orbit version can improve over a single orbit version, which I can't see from here. <laughs> but you can see if you just mosaic the single orbit DTMs, you can see border effects where you didn't have uh, enough information for interpolation in the single orbit case. You can see places where points from one orbit uh, fill in gaps uh, that were existing due to clouds or something uh, in another one. So this is avoided. And of course you always have the highest resolution point uh, sticking out. This means you, you don't overlap a low resolution region um, over a high resolution cloud. And we're applying a new technique for brightness adjustment and this introduces albedo da data from TESS to, to get an overall visually consistent uh, brightness. So what are we doing with it? This just demonstrates the combination of data sets, images and DTM in this case uh, at very high resolution. Uh, of course, to do that on a pixel scale and with very different data sources such as PRISM or CTX, there's a lot of work to be done, but sometimes it's enough just to have an HRC uh, image reference closely corrigers just with MOLA uh, to determine some lateral shifts or something to overlay many uh, data sets as is done here in one of our FP7 EU projects. And then we are currently looking at uh, the planned ExoMars uh, landing sites. This is the, the example of um, Mars Vallis, which is also in our first um, quadrangle finished. And here of interest, of course, are slopes at resolution from 100 meters upwards. Yeah, that's it. And I'll be in track C for some more information. <coughs> Thank you, Klaus.